In this video, we'll look at mass spectroscopy and the rule of 13, and how to turn a molecular weight into a molecular formula. High resolution mass spectrometry provides molecular mass information from which a user can determine the exact molecular formula directly. However, when a only lower resolution information is available, possible formulas can be determined by using the rule of 13. The molecular peak of a compound is typically designated as M plus or M over Z, mass over charge peak. In mass spectrometry, what happens is your sample is injected into a machine, which then ionizes your molecule. The radical cation frag molecule is then fragmented, and those fragment ions have their masses read. With the rule of 13, your first step is to find a base formula. The base formula contains only carbons and hydrogens. We assume a CNHN component and its equivalent AMUs of 13 are present in the molecule. With that, our base formula becomes CNHNR, where N is the equivalent of 13s, and R is any remainder mass present in our molecule. We have a formula here of M over 13 equals N plus R divided by 13. Whenever you determine a base formula or any formula using the rule of 13, always check the HDI to determine if it's a possible formula. So practicing a couple examples of a rule of 13 and figuring out just base formulas at this moment. If I take the molecular mass of 78, I find it useful to do your calculation using long division and the long division style you guys learned when you were in elementary school. So you take 13 divided by 78. 13 can go into 78 six times. And that happens to be exactly 78. So the number up here is n, and the number down here is your r. So when you're writing out your base formula, you'd have C6 H6 plus zero, or your base formula is C6 H6. Now, if we wanna check the HDI of our base formulas, remember our formula for HDI. So it's gonna be two times our number of carbons plus two, and then subtract out your number of hydrogens. When we determine that, we have an HDI of four. Since our HDI is positive and a whole number, this is a reasonable base formula. So looking at our next example here, we have a molecular weight of 108. So setting up our, our equation the exact same, I have an 108 divided by 13. 13 can go into 108 eight times. We end up with a remainder of four. So that means the number up here is our n, the number down here is r. So when I want to write the base formula, I'd write as C8, H8 plus four, or the base formula is C8, H12. If we want to check our HDI, the HDI equals 3. Again, our HDI is a whole positive number, so this is a reasonable base formula. So now we want to extend beyond base formulas. So once the base formula is found, the presence of oxygens and nitrogens is considered we would determine if we had an oxygen or nitrogen present by looking at the spectra, your IR and your NMR. We can swap out the equivalent AMU of carbon and hydrogen for the corresponding heteroatom. A good hint and rule of thumb is if your molecular mass is an odd number, then your formula must contain an odd number of nitrogens. If your molecular mass is positive, most likely you do not have any nitrogens, or very rarely you might have two nitrogens. So we can substitute carbons and hydrogens as needed. 
So now let's look at a couple examples of using the rule of 13 and adding in heteroatoms. Our first example has a molecular weight of 116. The first step is to figure out the base formula. We do the exact same calculation and set up as we did before. So if I look at my base formula, 13 goes into 116 eight times with a remainder of 12. This gives me the base formula of C8H20. And when we calculate that HDI, your HDI equals negative one. We know we cannot have a negative HDI. That molecule simply cannot exist. The negative HDI indicates that we have more hydrogens present than can possibly fit on a fully saturated compound. The only way you can get this is if you had a carbon with five bonds, and we all know that's the first rule of organic chemistry, no carbons with five bonds. So we have to fix this. In order to do that, we want to substitute in oxygens for our carbon and hydrogens. So to do that, we'll subtract out one carbon and four hydrogens from our formula, and we'll add in one oxygen. Doing the substitution, we get C7H16O. Then when we calculate the HDI for that, that's going to give us an HDI of zero. If we wanted to add in a second oxygen, we would simply follow the same calculation again. Subtract out a CH4 and add in one oxygen. That would give us a formula of C6H12O2. When you calculate the HDI for this one, that can give you an HDI of one. We can keep going further calculating our HDIs and keep going further adding more and more oxygens into our formula if we need to. Now remember the number of oxygens you add into your formula, you want to determine to get an idea by looking at your spectra. Our next example we want to look at is a molecular weight of 137. For that, it's important to note that right away, we know we have an odd number. If we know we have an odd number, I know I have to add in a nitrogen atom. So first thing, you want to calculate your base formula. So 137 divided by 13 gives us 10 with a remainder of 7. So this means our base formula is C10H17. If we check the HDI for our base formula, we can find our HDI equals 2.5. Since it's not a whole number, we know this is not possible. So if you have a half number like this, 2.5 or 1.5, you know you need to add in a nitrogen. And so we'll see what happens with our formula that way. So you'll subtract out a carbon and two hydrogens this time. And you'll add in one nitrogen. So you go through the exact same process as we did with the previous example, except now we're adding in nitrogens. So you end up with C9H15N. When we check that HDI, that HDI equals three. Now we have a whole number and it's positive. So that means this formula can be a possible formula for a structure. Now, if we want to go further with this example, we can add in oxygens as well. So I can have add in an oxygen and I get C8H11NO. And when I check the HDI for that, I get an HDI of four. So you can see looking at the HDIs, when I add a nitrogen, it increases the HDI by 0.5. When I add an oxygen, it increases the HDI by four. And if we wanted to, we can keep adding in even more oxygens. So we can go C7, 
H7NO2. And when we check that HDI, that's going to equal an HDI5. So something we can infer from an HDI5 here is we probably have an aromatic ring. And since I have an NO2 present, there's probably a nitro group as well. And so you can see all we're doing is substituting in the equivalent AMUs and changing which atoms we're designating and assigning to those AMUs. And so this concludes our lecture on the rule of 13. You should be able to now turn a molecular weight into a base formula and then add in the appropriate oxygens and nitrogens as determined by looking at your IR and NMR spectra.